What's going on guys? My name is Marissa and in today's video, we're going to break down why you're still not making $100 from home with maybe your online business or an online job because I guarantee 90% of the people that are watching this video are in this exact situation. Now I have personally posted about six, like whoosh, it'll appear like all these videos about working from home and making money online and how to make $100 per day. And oh my gosh, I could talk about how to do this, you know, all day long and post way more of these videos on my channel. But today I want to break down the reasons why if you're still not making $100 a day from home, from your online business, we're going to talk about the four factors and I guarantee the problem falls into one of these four factors. My goal for you by the end of this video is to evaluate which category you're in and to take action to solve the problem because I want everybody on my channel to succeed. I want everybody to have abundance and to create the life of their dreams. That's why I'm here. That's why I create this content. And so this video is to help diagnose the real problem because everybody, everybody is capable of making hundred dollars per day from home and having the dream life that they want. But it's more than likely that you've fallen into one of these categories. So let's talk about it. So reason number one, why you're probably not making $100 per day from home yet is because you don't have a life threatening situation or a situation that is so uncomfortable that it makes you move. It lights that ass on fire and makes you just figure it out until you have no other choice. And this was my situation a couple of times, actually. Well, really the first time when I left my nine to five, when I was a civil engineer, you know, I'd go into the office every day, go to work. And then it was a vacation with my family that actually changed my entire life because it was that vacation where I realized I wanted to be an entrepreneur. The point is when I started to dip into this entrepreneurial land, I had this pain because I was like, I have to get out of this job. I'm miserable. And I realized that there was a whole nother way, right? And a lot of you can relate. And so, you know, it's funny because my first business model was actually network marketing. Your girl was going to build an Amway business. Okay. And that was crazy to me to think, but I love the fact that, you know, getting into network marketing, it was crazy because the guy that I was going to sponsor with, I never ended up doing the Amway business um, because I figured out affiliate marketing. But what I loved about Amway was their like their people were so dedicated and were just like, I don't give a damn. I'm going to figure out this business. I'm going to build this business, get my team members. And the other thing that I loved is that they made us read a lot of personal development videos, which was awesome because it helped my personal development so much and made me that much more gun ho of there's no turning back. I'm going to figure out how to build a business. And there was no turning back for me at that point. Fast forward about a year and a half or maybe a year, I don't know, a little over a year into my journey. I hit rock bottom financially. I mean, I was so tens and thousands of dollars in credit card debt. Um, I had student loan debt and I knew what it would felt like to hit rock bottom. I mean, this was my life threatening situation. It was either, you know, figure out my online business, start producing income like now, like yesterday, or I'd have to find some job and go back and live with my parents. Like that was the reality I was facing. And so, and that was when I was transitioning, like from quitting e-commerce, I was doing Shopify and drop shipping and trying to figure out what I was going to do next. And so that is what lit my ass on fire. I was working 16 hour days. Like I, you know, put in those hours and I made sure I figured it out. And that's how actually my YouTube career started. But that's the thing. It's like, I know so many people who are comfortable. They have, you know, six figure jobs or they're just cruising through life and they don't have anything that's pushing them something that's making them suffer and that's not forcing them to go into entrepreneurship. And so if they did, if for some reason, like, you know, they knew they were going to lose their job or, you know, some other life external issue that was really, you know, extreme. Some of the richest billionaire entrepreneurs, multimillionaires, a lot of them started out homeless. I mean, homeless or in some upbringing there, they grew up very poor and their circumstances and their environment was just extreme for them and everything was pointing to them to not succeed. And so when you have that element of suffering or a life threatening situation, it always forces you to go and get laser focused. And I'm actually grateful 
that I hit rock bottom because I'm not sure I would have produced the results and the life that I have now and be able to travel and be a digital nomad and run my online business from wherever I want. So I'm grateful for hitting rock bottom. And so if you're maybe falling into this category where you have a comfortable job and you can have that job for the rest of your life and be fine, you might need to put an element into your life where you give yourself a due date of I'm quitting this job on this date and that's that. And you know, type up that resignation letter and do it because there's you know a friend of mine who is going to crush it whenever she starts her online business. But I'm like, hey, so and so, what haven't you started? What haven't you started? What you she's like, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. And she's making, you know, comfortably, you know, over six figures at her job. And I'm just like, uh, okay, well, let me know when you do. <laughs> All right, so the next topic or factor we're talking about here today is falling victim to popular belief. What do I mean by this? So let me give you an example right off the bat. Lots of people may tell you or you know, it, go, it goes around in the online space that you need a huge audience and email subscribers to start making money in your business. False, 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 false. No one, absolutely no one is born with an email list. People tell me this and I get so angry when they say, Marissa, oh, well you have an audience. Oh, well you already have 90,000 subscribers. I'm like, uh, hello, like did these 90,000 subscribers just pop up out of nowhere with no work? Like hell no, like I've made hundreds, probably over 300 videos. And so <laughs> let me repeat this again. You are not born with an email list. You are not born with 90,000 subscribers. You are not born with 90,000 followers on Instagram. It takes work. It takes being able to do it by yourself and you don't need hand holding to figure it out. You know, as I mentioned my story in this, you know, the last factor, I was desperate to make something happen and I was willing to do whatever it took. I didn't care if people were ahead of me. Well, okay, I did, but I didn't care. Like I was like, oh, like, man, she's got a lot of followers. Okay, well, I'm just going to start my journey and have faith and know that it's going to work out for me. You know that YouTube is going to help your business grow and scale like crazy. But why don't people start? Oh, I don't have a fancy camera like you, Marissa. Oh, I don't have a 4K setup. I don't have lights. Like, oh, I'm not, I'm not confident in front of the camera. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, here we go again. <laughs> like you again, you no one's just born a YouTuber and, and naturally good at being a YouTuber and talking in front of the camera. Trust me, when I got in front of the camera, I was not confident. I stuttered. I had moments of pauses for like 20 seconds and it was just I started with a pixelated camera. It was dark. I didn't use lighting. I used my phone like this thing you see right here and I used the webcam on my laptop. So I, you know, it was an older model of Mac. I didn't care. I just started, right? Because the other day when I was on YouTube, I was Googling something. I forgot what the topic was, but I found a video that was like three and a half years old. And I'm like, yeah, this is the only video on the topic. And I'm like, this is an awesome video. It was an 18 minute video. The quality was maybe a camera, an iPhone at best, but it was really dark. The quality wasn't good. And I'm like, this was amazing. This was just the information I was needing. And so that woman got my subscribe. She got my like and I opened up her and I downloaded her lead magnet and her freebie. I'm like, this is awesome. And so that's the point. It doesn't matter where you start. What matters is how you deliver and how you are confident and how you bring it. And that's just not pertaining to YouTube. That's talking about just getting started. Maybe it's on Instagram. You know, maybe you're starting your Facebook group. That's with going live in your Facebook group. Like just do the damn thing. Like just go for it. Getting back into factor number two, falling victim to popular belief. The other belief is like, oh, I'm starting too late. The market is already saturated. My niche on YouTube or wherever is too saturated. There's already too many influencers. And so if we all thought like that, no one in business would ever succeed never ever again. There are people that are going to start businesses, online businesses, in 10 years from now, the people, the children, I guess I should say, that are 10 years old, however many, when they grow up and become adults, they're gonna wanna start online businesses. And I guarantee you, they'll be able to build a million dollar business in the fitness niche, nutrition, health, wealth, the same niche that I am. It doesn't exist that a niche is too saturated or there's too much competition, it does not, happen so it's like remove that myth from your head because 
there's room for everybody at the top to eat and to make money and to build their own loyal fans and audiences and to sell their offers and make money online. By the way, I know this video is kind of like some tough love, but if you are enjoying this video, go ahead and smash that like button and join the family. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because you know I drop videos like this weekly and it helps tremendously support the channel and to keep me going to delivering this content for you guys and helping people throughout the internet. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And by the way, if you are interested in how I built my profitable business on YouTube, starting from zero, nothing, from scratch, nada, <laughs> go ahead and download my subscribers to sales blueprint. It'll be the first link in the description below and it is a super great resource to check out and to have handy as you build your presence on YouTube. The third factor of why you're not making $100 from home with your online business is because you're not treating making money online as a real business. What do I mean by this? Well, I admire those people like rappers, musicians, people who open up coffee shops, shops and new restaurants because it's their dream, it's their goal, it's a fire that they have behind what they're doing, a passion, like whatever they're going towards, whatever they're pursuing, it's going to work. It's do or die. This is going to be it. And so, you know, when, for example, somebody opens up a coffee shop or a brick and mortar business, they spend tens of thousands of dollars on doing it. I mean, they have to rent the space, hire employees, buy the furniture, buy the equipment, decorations. There's so many things to opening up a brick and mortar business. And so when they do that, like they have, they have to do it. They have to do it. They have to keep building their business or else they would have lost a hundred thousand dollars maybe. I don't know. It's do or die. And that's the thing is you're not treating making money online as a business, as something that has to work. And nowadays it's so, there's so many resources out there for it to work. And so my greatest pet peeve is when people DM me on Instagram, for example, and they say, Hey Marissa, I'm dead broke. I don't know where to start, but I need to make money today. And I'm like, I, I literally get this message probably about once a day. I see, I see it pop up and I see the message coming through and I automatically delete it. Why? Because it frustrates me because that signifies to me that they're not willing to put in any work and they, they want a band-aid fix and it's kind of offensive because it means that they don't respect online business. You have to treat your online business as a real, like if you had a coffee shop business and if you're investing your life, your soul, your money into this business. And so it's just not fair when people expect that money just will come from no work or from, you know, making millions of dollars taking online surveys. It's just not real. I mean, a sub factor of all of this is shifting your mindset to accept the fact that you need a mentor or something to help you along your way to help fast track you to where you want to be. Because I'm guarantee those people who are starting restaurants and coffee shops and, you know, more physical businesses, they probably hired somebody ahead of them to help them on their journey. Entrepreneurship is a team business. Like you help each other out. You help people get to the top. So if investing in a course, a training, a mentor, a business coach is something you know you need to do, but you're not willing to do it because oh, you don't have money or whatever, that's lack mindset. And you have to shift your mindset to know that it is okay to invest in the business. Like you're going to need to invest in your online business, period. I've invested several thousands of dollars into trainings, mentors, coaches, and it's helped me tremendously get ahead. All right. So the fourth factor of why you're probably not making a hundred dollars from home yet with your online business is because you have the shiny object syndrome. And you know what? I'll admit, I'm telling all of you guys this because I've had all of these things, right? I've experienced a whole lot in these last three years. And yeah, I definitely had shiny object syndrome. Like I remember when I had my e-com store, with Shopify, you know, that's when, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and all these new crypto coins were coming out. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, this is just put your money here and hold a list and da da da. And I'm just like, oh yeah, let me just buy a bunch of Bitcoin and blah blah blah. Yeah, that could have been a smart move if I would have done my research and become an expert on cryptocurrencies, but I did not. I mean, any investment that you make, it is very, 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 very important that you know 
everything about that, like real estate, gold, whatever you're investing into stocks, you need to become really educated on that topic, but that's beside the point. The point is I was like, I had my mind and my focus everywhere. And so nothing was growing exponentially. I had my Shopify store. I was into Bitcoin. I was getting into some online business opportunities with affiliate marketing. Like it was, my focus was scattered and my results definitely showed it. And so not to say that you can't try out different things in the beginning. There's a difference. And that's the great thing about online business is you can try out, you know, creating digital products. You can try out coaching and group coaching and all different types of business models online. You could even do trading and e-commerce until you find out what it is, but you have to try one thing at a time. The same thing when you're building traffic, you can't, you know, go on Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, and all these other social media platforms, TikTok, and expect to grow significantly on all four or five. You have to pick one, dominate it, and then move on to another one. Think about what it is you've tried, and if you've done this before, maybe you've gotten your feet wet in different you know, business models. You know, This is something I'm telling you right now, focus is so, so, so important. And so stepping far away from the shiny object syndrome, is going to be a key to your growth. All right, guys, I know if you are loving this video, you're going to love this video even more because we are talking about the 10 most profitable businesses in 2020, and that video is up next and starting right now. As opposed to email marketing, with messenger marketing, the open rate is like 70%. Let me tell you 